The average year of a Marvel fan goes like this. Woo! Yeah, baby! Or it goes like this. It's the biggest piece of dog sh language. And 10,000 points to whoever guesses where we are at this point of the year. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Deadpool and Wolverine is the movie of the year and it will save Marvel. Or will it? That's a different question. Before I get into the review, this is your spoiler warning, go watch it right now, it's genuinely peak cinema, so come back after you have watched it. So the premise of the movie is that Deadpool's universe is on the verge of a slow and painful destruction. However, Paradox here wants to speed it up because he can't be asked to wait a thousand years. The destruction was caused by the noble and heroic sacrifice of Logan in Logan. So Deadpool decides to track down variants of Wolverine till he finds the right one. But it turns out that this Wolverine variant's X-Men were all killed because he was drunk and he didn't help them to fight against the humans that were attacking them. Deadpool and Wolverine then get pruned and meet Cassandra Nova, they then team up with various heroes of Marvel's past to fight her. She however helps them return to the main X-Men timeline, whilst also having evil intentions of using Paradox's time universe destroyer thingy to power herself up and kill all of the universes but leaving behind the void. Deadpool and Wolverine team up and fight her and they settle in the main X-Men universe. Yep, that pretty much sums it up. And it's a lot simpler story than what the hype made it seem like. But that's the case with any Marvel movie that gets hyped up. But let's get into the nitty gritties. We can see that Ryan Reynolds loves playing Deadpool and the franchise as a whole. And this really is a love letter to all X-Men fans. Similar to how Endgame was for MCU fans and No Way Home was for Spider fans. And Ryan Reynolds and Sean Levy have literally poured their blood, sweat and tears into this. And seeing Hugh Jackman back was something I didn't expect to see before GTA 6. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to say it at some point. But him wearing his mask in the classic comic accurate costume was just... It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. Even the cameos that were brought in were thematically relevant rather than just being there for fan service. Blade, Elektra and Gambit are forgotten heroes in the Marvel multiverse who get a chance to actually matter for once, which is what both Deadpool and Wolverine are doing in this movie. Even Chris Evans' Johnny Storm actually matters. Laura being in it just ensures that Wolverine felt like he mattered and had a purpose, and it was just perfect. You could even go as far as to say that Henry Cavill's cameo as Wolverine made him feel like he mattered in the MCU, unlike a certain other studio. The film manages to make the emotional stakes just as impactful as the jokes in the movie, which is quite frankly what the MCU has been missing. Because lately, Marvel have made the emotional stakes quite literally a joke. Eat my hammer! Now I do have a few gripes about the movie, but one is mainly about the movie and the other two are sort of general things. The first thing is Cassandra Nova. She didn't really feel like a threat. Neither did Paradox, but these guys are supposed to be multiversal threats and yet I didn't care about their motives. Cassandra Nova has an origin story a lot like Sylvie which they could have explored by making the film slightly longer and adding a scene in. But the film does make up for it by being both a Deadpool movie and a Wolverine movie. The next thing is a more general thing about the MCU and that is Secret Wars comes out in 3 years or so hopefully. But none of the big multiverse movies ends with a multiversal incursion that could set up Secret Wars. So most likely Secret Wars will get delayed or renamed or something in the future will cause an explosion. The final thing that really stuck with me was that this film purely banks on audience reactions like any other multiverse movie and the crowd that I happened to be watching with was pin drop silent but for No Way Home there was cheering and this isn't a negative thing about the movie it's just mainly about the audience. This film is a perfect description of what a comic book coming to life is. Like seeing all of these heroes team up is something that would only ever happen in a comic book issue, but it's real. Speaking of other multiverse movies, this is what Multiverse of Madness should have been, since there is quite literally both the multiverse and the madness in this movie. And at the end of the day, this is a tribute from Ryan Reynolds to the fans. And we see this in the credits as we see behind the scenes footage of the creation of the X-Men movies, which was just quite emotional to think that this movie ultimately was 24 years in the making. But this movie also does leave behind huge questions that I will probably milk with content till the end of time. And this is supposedly going to set up Avengers 5 and 6, which now everyone's saying is Avengers vs X-Men, which is just crazy to think about. So as for my final verdict, this is a 9 out of 10. And comparing it to the other massive multiverse projects, I would place it in second place or on par with Multiverse of Madness, with No Way Home still holding that sweet top spot. And not because of the audience reaction, I just connected more to the emotional journey of Peter Parker and No Way Home than I did with Wade in this movie. But this is all subject to change as time goes on. Now as for the big question, will this save the MCU? The answer is that the MCU didn't need saving, it just needed time. Time to spend on these projects to make sure that they're perfect and to hire writers who actually read the comics. But don't forget to comment below your thoughts and subscribe whilst you're there.